Before schools started opening in a serious way, I posted a number of videos, a um, number of articles, talking about what the dangers of that were and what was likely to happen. And then I kind of shut up. I had had my say, I had made my predictions, and in science what you do is you make your predictions and then you see whether or not the data conform to those predictions. And unfortunately, I was pretty well spot on with what I said. So what I'd like to talk about today is from the classroom to critical care, school reopenings and the resurgence of COVID. Now, I'm going to focus on Arizona schools again because that's where I live. And in particular, I'm going to focus on Maricopa County. The problem is that Arizona schools, like most schools around the country, are doing a really horrible job with any kind of basic public health. There's very little in-school testing, which would be especially important for children who are dangerous asymptomatic carriers, which means that you don't know whether they have it unless you actually test. Uh, there's no t required testing or follow-ups. There's no contact tracing. In particular, there's no data being taken from close contacts of students outside schools, including in the homes. And the reason why that is such an issue is that there are no masks being worn in homes. A student goes home with COVID and there are no masks, there are no mitigations, you're in close contact and there's a very high likelihood they're going to pass it on. And we're beginning to hear anecdotal accounts of parents dying from COVID uh, when the only reasonable way they could have gotten it was from their children. We rely on parents to report any symptoms or close contacts. There are lots of incentives for them not to do so. And finally, the data that do exist are, for the most part, not being publicly disseminated in useful ways. For example, dashboards are put up. They show you data you know, for the, the last week or so, and then they take it down. Why do they take it down? Because pandemics are dynamic. You don't learn anything about pandemics by looking at a snapshot. You learn about pandemics by looking at change. What they're doing with their most districts dashboards is a little bit like saying, you don't need to watch a Star Wars movie. I'm just going to show you a few snapshots from the middle of it somewhere, and that'll be plenty. You'll be able to follow the plot. It's not the way it works. What that means is that the only way that we have to suss out what the impact of schools on the spread of COVID are is to look at indirect measures. And fortunately, there are indirect measures that tell us a lot about it. Now, here's a slide that I presented a version of in, in earlier presentations, uh, talking about the spread within schools. And what this emphasizes is how it spreads from schools back out into the community. Um, and again, that's important because community spread is the place where we actually do have some data that are useful for looking at what's going on with schools. And again, children are asymptomatic carriers who are not tested and who then carry it into homes where masks are not being worn. Um, again, Indirect measures are the only way to tell what's going on, and the only indirect measures that we really have have to do with community spread. Now, I'd like to thank my oldest daughter, Janice, who, as it turns out, is also an astrophysicist. Uh, she kind of started digging into hard-to-get data, trying to track down information about when various districts reopened in various ways, um, you know, doing screen snapshots of, of dashboards and retrieving data from that, getting into the county database, so on and so forth. So I would like to acknowledge that a lot of the data that you're going to see here are data that she actually was able to get in there and dredge up. So what has happened in Maricopa County? Well, what was happening prior to schools opening and such, is that cases were declining steadily. 
A lot of that, if you look back, had to do with the governor finally allowing communities to impose mask regulations and, and such things. Um, so numbers were coming down quite well until, for one, ASU opened and for another, schools were required to start providing on-site support for children who were judged to need it. And immediately you saw the impact of that on COVID cases. And I should say that these data are showing COVID cases when they were, um, you know, when they were actually reported rather than when they made it out into publicly available data, which means there's less of a time lag in this between, uh, between infection and the numbers that you see here, which reduces the apparent lag time. Anyway, um, ASU started schools, had state mandated uh, support, and within about a week, what we saw was that that rapid decline in cases leveled out. Um, it's kind of interesting that there were a bunch of business openings in there. Um, bars, gyms, pools, theaters, so on and so forth. And they didn't have a huge impact on numbers, frankly, until schools started opening again. And as soon as schools started opening again, what you saw was that the numbers again began to skyrocket. As schools started offering face-to-face -face classes, the numbers started to explode. Uh, since schools started reopening, cases in Maricopa County have gone up by about 400% to give you a sense of what we're looking at. Now, that, you can argue, well, that's just a, a correlation, you know, coincidence doesn't, doesn't prove causality. Um, that's true, although when you look at COVID cases, as I've talked about before, they're tends to be a pretty good association between things that have an impact on cases and what the cases actually do. So what we're looking at here is pretty strong evidence, but it's not the only evidence. Um, another place that you can go and look is you can look at what is happening in districts uh, that opened at various times. And so what we're looking at here are what, nine districts in Maricopa County uh, we're looking at the time that they opened and the percentage increase in COVID cases between the week of October 4th through 10th and the week of the 11th through the 17th. So that's just kind of a snapshot um, in there where Janice happened to have uh, screenshots of, of data for different school districts. What you can see here is that there is a very strong anti-correlation between, well, a, a very strong correlation between when schools opened and what is happening with growth. That if you look at the schools that opened earliest, schools like Queen Creek, Higley, Gilbert, you saw growth in that one week period of, you know, 60, 65, over 70% in a single week. On the other hand, when you go down to schools that opened later, so here we're talking about schools like Mason, Scottsdale, and, and Chandler, what you see are the numbers are much lower. So there is a very strong correlation there saying that districts that opened earliest are seeing most rapid community spread of COVID. And again, that's just a very strong argument for a direct association between school openings and community spread of the disease. As I've talked about before, any real discussion about COVID in schools, you really have to start with Israel. Because Israel is the one place that <laughs> without really planning to, they did a, a controlled experiment. On May 17th, they had gotten their numbers down to some of the lowest in the world, 
And then they opened schools with some restrictions, you know, wearing masks, that kind of stuff that are supposed to be mitigations that make it all better. So pretty much the kinds of things that we're doing here. And what happened within a few weeks, you know, in this case, if you look at it within about three weeks to a month, cases were beginning to really climb. And going from May 17th to July 17th, um, things had gone from, you know, just a very few cases per million today to over 200 cases per million today. Um, and they were able to do tracing in Israel. And what was found was that in the early days of this, that most of the cases could be traced back immediately, directly, to what was happening in schools. So, quoting, uh, I didn't put his name here, but this was quoting the, uh, essentially quoting the guy who was the deputy director of the um, public health uh, administration in Israel, testifying before Nesset. This is reported in the Wall Street Journal. Epidemiological surveys by Israel's health ministry showed that after Israel opened its entire school system without restrictions on May 17th, a spike in infections occurred among the country's youth that later spread to the general population. In other words, Israel's always done the, already done the experiment, and that's what happened there. It's interesting because you can take Israel's curve and you can compare it directly with what's happening in Maricopa County. And so what I've done here, the red is showing what's happened in Maricopa County. Well, actually, no, the red is showing, this is an Arizona comparison. The red is showing what happened in Arizona. The blue is showing what happened in Israel. What I have done here is I have offset the data so that the baselines were the same because Israel's numbers were a lot lower when they started. And then I've shifted it so that the date that Israel started opening schools, which was around May 17th, matches September 15th, which was kind of in the midst of when Maricopa County, Arizona schools were starting to open. And what you can see is that after that point, the two curves are basically indistinguishable. And so right now we are seeing exactly the same kind of growth that Israel saw after it opened its schools. Um, here's what happened to Israel after that. Once you get this thing going, once it spreads into the community, now you've just got community spread again. So, um, <clears throat> if you look at what it took, in Israel, things got started when schools opened. It happened just like it's happening here. What it took to then get it under control was, well, first of all, I should point out that, that um, when they started, before they opened schools, they were almost the lowest numbers in the world. By the time the consequences peaked, they had the highest case rates in the world. So here we are. They were among the lowest until schools reopened. And now I want to take a look at what it took for Israel to recover from that. Within a few weeks, um, they restricted gatherings under over 20 people. A lot of business closures. They restricted that further a little bit later. And by the way, I should point out that we have already in Arizona passed the point where Israel started taking measures to try to rein this thing in again. Um, more restrictions a little bit later, finally restricting gatherings less than 10 or over 10 more business closures, they were clamping down pretty seriously, and they kind of got it to level out until it took off again. Again, there was a lot going on here in, in Gilbert, or pardon me, in Israel. This is where they closed schools again. 
And if you look at what happened when they closed schools again, sure enough, within a couple of weeks, things had turned over and they fell, and they fell rather precipitously. Now, Israel's trying it again. They, middle of October, they started lifting some restrictions again. Um, they just, on November, 4, on November 1st, uh, started trying to reopen schools. But if you look at that, it took Israel five and a half months to recover from the impact of opening schools in more or less the way that we're opening schools or that we have opened schools here, seeing exactly the same thing. Um, in that five and a half months, the consequences in Israel were dramatic. And there we have it. The summary is that things in Arizona and Maricopa County especially are happening exactly like you imagine they would happen if you looked at the consequences of reopening schools. It was a safe bet that opening schools in Arizona was going to blow up in our faces, that it was going to drive a, a new spike in pandemics. And sure enough, as predicted, as, as we have seen school openings, we have seen a spike following that. And there's pretty good indirect evidence, especially the fact that the districts that opened first are the districts that are seeing the fastest growth, that, yeah, the schools were one of the primary triggers of what's happening. Although districts are doing their best to hide that fact even from themselves. There is an extraordinary amount of intentional ignorance out there right now. And the price of that hubris will be high. It's already high. We see it. And so we're at kind of a strange point. The question that we face now is whether anybody cares 